<laughs> I, I just love the idea that, like, um, it must, I think it was Scott Morrison, our PM, that w- that said it's inevitable to be a pandemic yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Because I was curious. I was like, what sparked this? And people were like, oh, the, the Prime Minister said it. Yeah. I was like, okay, cool. Well, Everything we're, we're he says is true. We're trusting politicians now. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's become. Yeah. That's how desperate we are. But you see, everyone goes from not trusting politicians yeah. to when he says, Stock up on bog rolls. Yeah. Everyone fucking just jumps on it. Yeah. I was just like, that's people's go-to. Yeah. Like, oh, man, we're, we're going into a pandemic. <laughs> Best load up on toilet paper? <laughs> yeah. Like, what about non-perishable goods? Yeah, nah, no, d- no. You're not going to need anything to wipe if you're starving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. There's no food going into the factory. No, it's... no. Have you got one of these? What is that? What? Did, where did that come from? I brought it in. Shane's holding up a giant... <laughs> What looks like an army military backpack of sorts. It's not giant. I didn't see you sneak it in. 55 so. litre. It's because it's camouflage. It's, I mean, <laughs> it's not. It's just like an olive colour. <laughs> what it's makes called, it camouflage? It's called olive drab. <laughs> it is olive drab. Yeah. I mean, maybe if it was in the Coles olive aisle, it would be camouflaged. Why have you bought this in? Are you worried that the pandemic is going to start this now? This is a bug out bag, dude. It's the what? A bug out bag. What's a bug out bag? Haven't you watched Doomsday Preppers? Okay. I have not. This is a flint and steel fire lighter. Oh my god, we have lighters though. Bro, I'm, I want to have a look at all this. Come on in, man. Yeah. He's, he's holding a, an olive drab backpack and he's pulling out. It's got so many this utility is, pockets. Oh man, there's pockets it, within pockets. Yeah, but. Yeah, okay. <laughs> in case you got uh, sawdust. Okay. That's not sawdust, that's for coronavirus, dude. Uh-huh. I got a first aid kit in here. Is that a Nintendo DS? Got a sewing kit in case yeah. you need to fix anything. All right. No Nintendo DSs. I think you've mistaken what a pandemic is. is. No, that's just like straps. straps, Yeah. Yeah. Spare straps. Yeah. Yeah. And then... Don't forget that. Not yet. Power bank? Not yet. I'm getting there, right? I'm just (laughs) like... (laughs) I'm worried that you think this is the apocalypse. I mean, you said doomsday. Have you got... Hospital grade disinfectant hand wipes? I mean, no, I don't. I do. Yeah, yeah, I know you do. (laughs) (laughs) And... Where is it? Kitchen tidy bags. Why? Oh. Have... <laughs> what? what? <laughs> you weren't prepared for me to ask you why you had that? <laughs> you, why, why you, well, you, you thought not? you would just hold that up and I would go, well, oh, yeah, of course. When corona hits, don't come don't come to me for kitchen tidy bags. <laughs> okay, I won't. <laughs> You're too far away. <laughs> yep, so that's my trusty bug out bag. I'm a prepper now. Yeah. Um, are you worried it's going to start while we're here in the booth? You never know. Uh, I mean, you yeah, never know. I guess. Haven't you seen The Walking Dead? Yeah, a little different, actually. Um, on account of, like, though? yeah, uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, that's me. Well, I'm glad prepared you're prepared. for safety and survival. Cool. Yeah. Um, it's not quite the apocalypse. I think it's just. Yet. So, like, for example, you catch the coronavirus. No, I won't because I got the bag. No, no, no. The bag doesn't make you immune <laughs> to the coronavirus. But the mask inside the bag, dude. All you're going to be doing is walking around real sick with an olive bag. <laughs> <laughs> you're still going to have the coronavirus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> with my yeah, mask. It's too late. <laughs> it's too late. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Peanuts are on the ground. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to get digging. Get, get a shovel. I yeah. need my bag and a shovel. No, you don't. Do. <laughs> what is the pandemic? Get? Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. That's not what people tuned in for. <laughs> <laughs> no, they have tuned in for Hobby Homies. Welcome. Welcome. What up? I'm Shane, sitting oh. across from Fox. The beautiful Fox. Oh, thank you. You're well, welcome. you look beautiful. You've had a haircut. Thank you. I have not. I did have a haircut. It was that one on the left. Yes. You, you, knew, you noticed. Yeah. Oh, your wife's a lucky woman. Mm. Um, we are talking board games today. Totally. Board games, uh, the people have spoken. Yes. Not through their, uh, words. No. But through the amount of views we had. Views? I mean, I guess. Listens? I think, downloads? I think our thing calls it downloads. Okay. The amount of hits. Yeah. Our last board game episode got. Hit. The people want board games. Yep. Um, lucky for them, we froth board games. We, we're giving it to them. Yeah. What do we got today? We got, well... We could talk about a myriad of things. We yeah. played Gloomhaven, Gloomhaven together yeah. quite recently. I think I think I want to start. Okay. At your D and D experience the other week. Okay. 
So we're so, throwing D and D and like other RPGs and stuff into our into board, board game games. Apps. Yeah, I've never played D and D. Yeah, very well, interested though, but never have. This was my first time playing D and D, and like I kind of went in very raw. Yeah, raw, raw. Like Monday Night Raw. Like raw, exactly. Yep. Yeah. No condoms. No, well, no. Yeah. No. Just, I, no, we're playing D and D. Nice. <laughs> Didn't need them. <laughs> oh um, no, nothing but men. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. It was like a barbecue. Um, so we had a mate, and he was like at one of our board game meetups that we have like once every second Friday. Yeah. It was like, would you guys be keen to doing D and D? And like us and our gr- me and the, the group, none of us had really played before. I think yep. they'd all played once, but. They got together and made their characters and then ran out of time. Yeah. Because that's quite a lengthy process. Yeah. So he was like, I'm a pretty good dungeon master, which is, for people that don't know, I think most people would know that D&D is Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. It's like a, I don't know how you would explain it. It's quite a free, you can play it so many different ways. You can play it however you like, really. Yeah. We could play it right now. Yeah. With no, you don't need any tools in front of you. No. One of you is the dungeon master, so you're kind of like the master of the universe. Master of the dungeon. The dungeon, even. The one telling the story, basically. Yeah, yeah. you control the scenery and the yeah. characters. And the enemies. And the enemies. Yeah. Um, and you can make them as hard or as easy as you like. Yep. You throw, like, I'd be like, Shane, you walk into a, a dark and seedy forest. It's dank. Oh, it's God. wet. It's humid. It's so dank in here. It's instantly darker than... When you previously walked in, I'm not a DM, so this is terrible. <laughs> um, you can't see more than 20 foot in front of you. I can feel it. Oh my God. What do you do? You can't see more than 20 feet in front of me. I'm going to walk 20 feet and then look again. Roll your dice. <laughs> <laughs> do a uh, looking check. <laughs> Shane rolled a one, the tree falls on him, he dies. Game GG. over. Yeah. All right, let's do it again. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> That's it, man. You had one life. Damn. Okay. So, yeah, it's basically you've got a dungeon master who controls the universe and the other characters in it uh, just play along that story. Yeah. The idea is it's almost like a, a th- it's almost like a theater improv session where the DM, you, you don't really say no. Yeah. You say yes and. Yes and. You know? Oh, yeah. So a character goes, all right, I'm stuck in a cave fighting goblins. I want to try and dig through the rock wall. The DM doesn't say... You can't. It's just too. It's too. It's too tough. It's fucking rock, dude. You've it's got rock. no. What are you, no you going to dig? You got a shovel? It's going to break. <laughs> you don't say that. You let the characters discover that on their own. So you go. All right. So you try and you try to hit the wall with the shovel, and your shovel breaks. Roll a dexterity. Exactly. Okay. So you allow those things to happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know that they can't dig through the wall. Yeah. But you let them try and find that out from themselves. Yeah. They face yeah. the consequences. They break the shovel. I now like they, that. they don't have a shovel anymore. They can do whatever mm-hmm. they like. Yeah. But obviously. You still have rules. Yeah. You know, people can't fly, for example. Yeah. A person can't just randomly be like, I choose to fly <laughs> out of this cave. And they'd be like, you jump up making a fool of yourself <laughs> yeah. because you don't have that ability. No one does. Yeah. You know? So it's quite fun. We played it um, the fifth edition, sort of like, I guess what we'd say is the more mainstream version of D&D. Yeah. Yeah. Where you've got a board. Um, you make your characters, et cetera, et cetera. There's a very, we use a website called D&D Beyond. Okay. So the cool thing was we had a bit of a group chat going, so we actually got to make our characters before the session. I was about to ask that. Were yeah. you given pre-made characters or did you make it yourself? Correct, yeah. Well, we made we made them ourselves. Through his guidance, yeah. um, he sort of said, the DM sort of said, you know, what kind of characters do you want to play? Yeah. Some would say, oh, like I want to be a healer or... I want to cast spells or I want to be an archer. Yeah. So he'd be like, okay, you can pick this class. And then after you, you sort of picking the class is the first thing you do. And okay. then from that, you like pick what race you want to be. Yeah. And like in World of Warcraft or other games like that, um, races have innate bonuses yeah. that might like go really well with those classes. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you can do whatever you want. Some people call them passive abilities. Yeah. Passive, passive abilities. stats, yeah. yeah. So it's pretty cool. You go through and you pick like what spells you want to start with or what abilities you want. Yeah. Um, you can also uh, pick which of your stats you put your points into. So you kind of build your character. I remember looking at it once because I bought like the, the 
starter box or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it comes with like a little campaign, the dice, some some sheets of paper, some pre-made characters. Yeah. And then also the ability to make your own. Yeah. And I remember like you could roll on different stats. So you could be like, I want to be a warrior or a barbarian or whatever they're called. Yeah. And you could be like strength and you can roll and be like, your strength's five. So yeah, it's okay. like, you're a barbarian, but you're like weak as shit. Yeah, that's cool. So like, I liked that idea of it. Like you that's could very have, cool. Yeah. Or you could have like a barbarian who's like a super genius. Yeah. Like he's got a really high like thinking stat. I don't know. I don't know Intellect. But in, yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Something that you must have rolled low in. <laughs> oh yeah, I got a negative one. <laughs> yeah. And then like, yeah, I just liked the idea of you could like not... Not every class was the same. Yeah. Like, they could be just completely different. You could have three barbarians and they're all completely different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's very cool. We didn't yeah. we didn't play like that. We didn't roll for them. We sort of picked which stats we wanted. Okay. Um, but I like that idea too. So, I mean, already, like, there's so many different ways you can play it. Yeah. Um, so, we played... I mean, it was our intro game, so maybe that's why we built the characters. Yeah. Um, but it was it was interesting. So... I'd never done anything like it. I've never done an RPG. Oh, that's a lie. We we played, oh, sort of the struggled root, our way through a the root Kickstarter one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um. But really, we we I hadn't done anything like this, and I kind of knew the stigma that went with D and D. Like that's like next level nerd. Yeah, yeah. There's like you know your Warhammer fans, yep. and then there's like. Yes, Star Wars fans. <laughs> oh, I guess that's different now. It's, yeah, it's changed, yeah, man. It's changed. Used to be comics back back in the day. Yeah, yeah, that's but true. But you read comic books, you're a nerd. Now look at all the Marvel stuff. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> man, we're old. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, and D and D was like that next level. It's like almost like top shelf nerd yeah. in a way. Yeah, it's almost like a rite of passage as well. Yeah. So I've done it now. That's good. But you know what? I'm going to stop you there. With D and D being considered nerd. Yeah. There's that many people that play it which aren't nerds. Correct. Like Vin Diesel. Oh, yeah. Loves D&D. Yeah. It's you know? definitely a stigma. It's an unwarranted stigma. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know. And I think for actors or, or people that are in that, like, performing art sort of thing, it's the best thing for them. Like, oh, yeah. They, it's a character. That's it. They can You're play that character. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. And it's funny. It, it caters almost to everyone. Yeah. You oh, get yeah. to play a character. Anyone could enjoy it. I think so. Um, so we did enjoy it. We played through a, a campaign. Um, we played for six hours, maybe. Jeez. So that was, it was decent. I yeah. think we managed to just squeeze through to level two. Okay. By the end, which was really nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. especially for our first session to go in and like be able to spend the week <clears> after <throat> playing the game, sort of like we have an understanding of how characters work. Yeah. You know, it's not just playing the game. It's like all the lead up and character building you do yeah, when yeah. you're not playing. Yeah. You go home and you go, oh, I can learn any of these spells. This will work really nicely with this, but I know old mate from our party has this other ability that yeah. can do it, so I probably don't need to. You know, you think about that kind of stuff. So it was fun. Um, it was interesting because our whole group hadn't played before. Yeah. The Dungeon Master did a really good job. The campaign was phenomenal yeah yeah the game itself i enjoyed and i got uh, a hang of it quite quickly because a lot of it's just like any video games you've played before world of warcraft yeah, bit yeah. mixed with a bit of um <clears throat> like warhammer rolling your dice to to hit and to wound and yeah. you got your saves and all that kind of stuff so, so that's I, all familiar it was all familiar yeah i, I think I, I felt like i picked it up quite quickly yeah um the other guys that i was playing with i think our group we didn't quite grasp the concept of there were a few people who played it like it was a a war game. Okay. Like a a board game. Yeah. A strategy board game, you know? Right, okay. And played it very like, okay, I move six squares, I shoot my thing. That's the most effective thing. They're like trying to min-max their characters. Yeah. They were doing like the same thing every time in combat. There wasn't a lot of thematical story driven stuff creativity that yeah yeah like we would clear out an area of the enemies yeah we'd be left in this cave and they would be like all right let's just go to the next room and some of us would be like oh should we look around and people were like no nah, let's just get out of here no oh, right okay you know so we weren't really interacting with like the stuff around us we were yep. playing it sort of just as a dungeon crawler yeah board game type thing yeah um and there were a few times where some of us were like 
arguing with the DM, which just breaks immersion. Oh, of course it does. You got to do whatever they say. Like, yeah. they're not there to like ruin the game for you. No, in anything, it's the opposite. It's they're like a to parent. Make, to, you know, they make the game as best as it can for you. Yeah, they're like, look, guys, being safe is the most fun you can have. <laughs> yeah. Let's just stick within the rules. That's the most fun you can have. That's what the DM does. <laughs> like, you guys don't know it, but what I'm doing is better for you. Yeah. I know it hurts. Yeah. I know it doesn't feel good. Because they're not going to deliberately kill you because then they got nah. nothing. Then their game's over too. Yeah, what are they going to do? Yeah. Twiddle their thumbs. Yeah. Um. So it was kind of like just tough for a few of the players to break out of that. I rolled an 18 on whatever on my dexterity. Why yeah. can't I do the thing that yeah. I want to do? Yeah. And the yeah. DM would be like, well, because you're trying to punch a Goliath and you're a human, Yeah, you'll break your hand. Yeah. Even yeah. if you roll a 20 and crit it, maybe you like only slightly break your hand. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you just can't do the thing you're trying to do. Yeah. I'm letting you attempt it yeah. and showing you how difficult it is or how impossible it is through the result of your actions. It's yeah. like what we spoke about earlier. You can't dig through the side of the cave. Yeah. If the DM... Yeah. So, and that was just tough for me because I was like, I guess because I'd done a little bit more research or I was familiar with the core rules of the game, I didn't yeah. need to go through that those steps. Yeah. So I was like, guys, let's just have fun. Let's like set up camp here. Let's try and find some rats. Like yeah. early on, we got attacked by rats. So I, I killed one of them and I, I grabbed a dead rat and put it in my backpack. It's not like something that you can do. Yeah. It's not an item. No. But I was like, okay, I'm going to use my action to pick up a dead rat and put it in my backpack. What did your DM say? He was like, all right, you pick up a <laughs> okay. smelly dead rat and you put it in your backpack. <laughs> you know, he was all for it. Yeah. And so yeah. I went in, like I figured out how to make your own item. So I made yeah. a custom item called dead rat Yeah. and I put it in my inventory. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I got it. No one else does. So. Yes, you did. So I was trying to do a little bit of that, yeah. um, <clears throat> but I could. I loved it. I just loved it. Yeah. In fact, that was one of the reasons I went out and bought Gloomhaven. Yeah. I was like, I enjoy D and D, but I also like having really set rules. Yeah. Campaigns all set for us. I like the battles and stuff, and Gloomhaven's sort of like a refined version of that, I guess. Yeah, I suppose it is. Like you still have the RPG element to it out of town. Yeah. Like, out of sorry, out of battles. Yeah. 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 You still kind of build your character like the character's almost built for you yeah um and that's a big fun part of gloomhaven is like getting your random character or whatever yeah and sort of trying to figure out how to build them with their cards so but i really liked D D. um i was actually really crook last week well, i'm still crook but i was even more sick last week and missed out on session number two. Oh man so which i mean the dm took it up a notch like last time we had a whiteboard yeah where he like drew up a grid and like put little cu- cardboard cutouts of rats on there. Yeah. And this time I think he had a screen. Oh, <laughs> so big. like what one of the one of our Discord users posted. Yeah. In the, yeah, Harrison. In, yeah. Did um did you use minis like uh, in the combat? <clears throat> so he was like I think originally cuz it was like he had to throw it together so quickly. He was yeah. like bring your own minis. Okay. Um and one of the other guys who is the board games guy of the group, he's yeah. the guy with all the board games. <laughs> yeah. He was like, I've got like a hundred and something minis from, it's a game called Arcadia Quest. Okay. Which is a dungeon crawler. Yeah. They're sort of cartoonish characters, but they're the right size and there's so many different ones. So he brought all those and we kind of just picked ones. She's from them. Yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah, look that like our sense. characters. Yeah. Um, and we all got really close to like, even the races. Yeah. Um, so we just use those. I yeah, think we'll nice. continue to use those. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty keen to paint them. They look quite fun to paint. I was about to ask, are they painted? They're not painted. Ooh. Um, so, you know, there's only... Six, four, I think our group is somewhere between four and six people. We've got a big group. Yeah. I think there's six. Um, so just painting those up will be a bit of fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was cool. It was good. I would definitely play it again. I probably, I could not imagine being a DM. Yeah. The DM job is just so big. Oh, yeah. If I have one takeaway from D&D, it's that go in with an open mind. Yeah. Go in without an expectation of what you want to do. Spend more time interacting with the story. Yeah. Immersing yep. yourself in the story. Less time just trying to kill bad guys. Because yep. there's a thousand board games where you can just run through just a dungeon kill and guys. kill bad guys. Yeah. There isn't a thousand games where you can have such an open and fluid story. Yeah. Second thing, uh, just like do whatever you can to like make the DM's day. 
bring drinks for the DM, bring, yeah. bring, bring presents, because the three hours or six hours that you play, they have spent weeks preparing yeah. that yeah. so that you can have the most fun. You know, oftentimes the DM, all they want to do is play, but they know they're the best person suited for DM. Yeah. So. It's a sacrifice. It is. It's a big one. Yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. We'll have to have a, a D&D session sometime. Yeah. Get some of the boys together and have a crack. It would be cool to do a DM session on this podcast. <laughs> that as would an be episode. cool. That would be cool. That would be interesting. Could be done. It could be done. Could be done. We'll I, see. I think so. I think so. We'll ponder that. Yeah. We may need Jack, to. Would you be keen for D and D? Yeah, I'd be down. For that. Yeah, yeah, Jack, I'd be down. Yeah. We may need to move our recording setup though. Like, we're not going to fit any more than us in here. Let's be honest. Well, I was thinking like Jack in this corner, DM in the other, and doing one of the like in your head D and D sessions. Oh, yeah, what do they call it? Theater of the mind. Yeah, so it's all in your head. Yeah. yeah, it's all in your head. You crazy <laughs> fool! You know you don't have the minis or whatever. Yeah. yeah. My two cents on that would be that those can be some of the best D and D sessions. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I think so. Yeah. All right, Jack digs it. Jack digs yeah. it. Jack's in. Yeah. All right. Lock it in, Jack. All right. We'll, we'll, if you could uh, just learn all the rules and be the DM for us. <laughs> oh, no. I play, I play DM. No, no, that's okay. It's all right. We'll find, find someone. Damn. We'll hire. We'll hire a professional. <laughs> you do your thing. They can do their thing. <laughs> yeah. Have so you bought the starter set? Yeah, because it was like twenty five bucks. Oh yeah. And it comes with like a DM screen. Mad. Um, which has got heaps of stats in there, which are cool. That's cool. Heaps which are like unnecessary. Maybe I don't mm. know. Can't. Never played it. <laughs> Either confirm or deny that yeah, one. Yeah, me neither. I was. <laughs> um. <laughs> Things like random name generators and stuff, which, I mean, is probably handy for making up characters on the fly. Yeah. But you could probably just have, like, a list of names that you've prepared earlier anyway. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's true. But anyway, yeah. So, like, I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm interested. I'm really interested. The only things I haven't got is, uh, I think it's called the Player's Handbook. Okay. And the Monster monster Manual or something like that. Yeah, okay. So, that, that, the, that monster one has, like, every monster you could ever imagine. Yeah. And it's, like, stats for them and all that sort of oh, shit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know much about that D and D Beyond thing, but it's it's like a it must be an officially licensed. It must be their website. Yeah, you can go on and buy those handbooks. Oh, okay, so you can buy like a campaign or uh, an expansion, I guess. Yeah, and it comes with like bonus, like new classes, uh, new monsters, stats for them, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, and it's really cool because if you're the DM on it. And you get people, you invite people to your campaign. They have access to all the stuff you've purchased. That's cool. Yeah, that's so cool. So I know a few people that are really into it, like our DM. Yeah. He's just got everything. He's like, jump in, you'll be able to use all these things. In fact, there was one class I wanted to play, but he didn't have. So he went out and bought it for me. Oh, just wow. So I could play it. Nice. It was like five bucks or something. What class was it? It was called an Artificer. Okay. And it can then branch off into either an Alchemist or like an Artillerist. So you can be like a, you can build turrets and stuff. Oh yeah, kind of like a, a steampunk, like an engineer sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, like... steampunk engineer yeah. or steampunk mad scientist, chemical person. Yeah, or yeah. There's one other I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to do that. Originally, I bought myself a fish. Sure. So like for like <laughs> I think three bucks, there's a fish race that you can play as. <laughs> wow. So I bought okay. that and I was like, dude, I'm playing as a fish. He was like. <sighs> About that, <laughs> he was like underwater Look. maps only. He was it needs to be fully submerged once every four hours, else it dies. Wow! And he was like, "There's no water. Like you can't. <laughs> you'll you'll die very quickly." You could just get everyone else in the party to like tip water bottles on you. Yeah, carry that, him around in a bath. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. I think we could have made it work. Yeah. But anyways, he he suggested otherwise. So I think your DM needs to like check himself. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, why can't he just have, like, <laughs> pools of water around? Exactly. Just, just change the campaign, man. Conveniently placed dams and lagoons. You enter a giant cavern. The first thing that your eyes are drawn to are a giant six-foot-deep water, the size of a fish person race. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also some cave trolls. But don't forget the water. <laughs> if any of you need to be submerged, it's right there. Exactly. I think so. He just wasn't trying hard enough. No. Nah. Get a yeah. new one. Get a new one. <laughs> so, so it was fun, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I rate it. it. I mean, it all rests on the DM, yeah. really. Your experience. Oh, and, and the players you play with. Yeah. So that, that you know, like we played Gloomhaven just last night. 
Yeah. And I, I can already feel a lot of elements from there that were similar to Gloomhaven, like mm. the start of before you actually go into the scenarios, mm. you got your city and road, what do you call them? Um, events. Events, yeah. yeah. Things like that where it's like a decision. Yeah. And like you make the decision between the group. Yes. I, I do enjoy that side of board games. Yeah. It's very cool. I think Gloomhaven has done it very well. It's more of... Gloomhaven is basically just a more well-constructed, more confined version of D&D in yeah. a sense. But it still is a dungeon crawler because that's most of the game. Totally. Definitely. Like fighting through the dungeons and then you're done, you're out to town, you buy, you sell, you whatever, yep. and then go back out again. Totally. Yeah. 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 It is 90% of the game, definitely, yep. the dungeon crawling aspect. Yep. Although the way we played D&D on that game session... That was 90% of the game as well, but that was okay. probably how we played it yeah, as right. opposed to what it can be, yeah. you know? Um, but can we take a quick break? Yes, we can. Thank you. So, all right, Shane, explain Gloomhaven to me now that we've played it twice. twice. <laughs> but that's a total of what? It's probably about nine, ten hours? Uh, maybe like f- seven. Okay. It felt like 10. Because <laughs> last night it was like two hours after we like uh, yeah, finished true. setting everything up. Yeah, that's true. So maybe like six. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Somewhere between three and 10. Yeah. <laughs> it all blurs together. Yeah. So explain Gloomhaven to me like I have no idea oh, what man. Gloomhaven is. I'm not qualified to explain this, but I'll try. <laughs> yeah, you've only I'll try. a few hours. Okay. So it's gloomy. It is gloomy. Yeah. Well, okay. I don't even know how I'm going to start this, dude. You put me in the spot here. Well, okay. What's the first thing you do? You, like you get your character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get your character. So we just would just draw random characters. We mm. the first time we picked, and yep. we picked alone by their little icon, their symbol. Yeah. I picked the little gear thing, but yep. it was like a gnome. Yeah, you didn't like it. Fucking gnomes, man. <laughs> you unbox it and you're like, oh, what have I done? <laughs> as soon as I saw the art on this thing, yeah. You're like, what's with That's his head? Ugly. <laughs> the head ugly on him. motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, so I, we just picked like that. But, like, the last time we just played was random. Yeah. And I ended up with the um, the scoundrel, the one that you played last time. Yeah. So, in there, I had ability cards with initiative values on them, mm-hmm. a little board for the character, and a mini. Yeah. Yeah, the packs are quite cool. Yeah, you get, like, and the, I like the combat phase where you draw that card and it's a plus or minus or a zero. Mm-hmm. Um, they're pretty cool. Little combat modifiers. Yeah, yeah. So your base attack might do three plus or minus, mm. which is which is cool. But we we started uh, we started our, our first mission. Um, it was like the intro mission. Well, yeah, it's just is a it, regular. Mission. Is it the stand? Is it the same every time we play that game though? Like yeah, it that is. Mission. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. The first few are the same, and then I think as you complete them, so. As you complete them, it like branches out. And you unlock new areas totally. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It's, oh man, I, I can't do it justice by trying to explain it like this, but I love the map aspect of it with mm. the little stickers. Yeah. So like when you explore a new area, you put the sticker down and there it is. So you unlock this town or yep. whatever. Yep. Um, you complete a dungeon, you slap a sticker down. Yeah. You get achievements and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the pre- characters just seem like they can be played in a number of different ways as well, mm. and there's a large variety of characters too. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Oh, the initiative values are good, how the enemies draw random initiative values. So, like, you, like as a scoundrel, we had a lot of low numbers, which meant high initiative, so I'd go first. Yeah. Um, and the and the enemies would draw theirs, and it was like the, com- the, the combat could be... It was different every single round, even the same combat phase or the still the same fight. Yeah. It was different every turn. The AI for the... Yeah. AI. Yeah, AI, yeah. Yeah, it was really yeah. good. Yeah. You, like, flip a card off their deck for all, say, the bandit archers. Yeah. And it will say something like, move two, attack, one damage, range three. Yep. So that's what they're doing this turn. That's what they it, do. It says their initiative as yeah. well, which determines whether where they slot into our turn order. Yep. They might go before all of us. Yeah. They might go before one of us or yep. last. Like, yeah. It's good because it... it and they, they follow really basic rules, but, yeah you get a different card every time. So sometimes something might move a lot and do yeah. a weak attack or sometimes it might do an insane attack but not move at all. Yeah, but so, but they're generally going to go last. They'll have a high initiative. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that gives you and your allies time to maybe take out one, of the two, one or two of them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and the combat, you, you sort of 
you're meant to keep it to yourself. So you don't tell your allies what you're going to do. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, you place your cards face down when yeah. everyone's ready, you flip them and then you know who's got the higher initiative yeah. and who's doing what. Yeah. You can change, like your cards will have two different actions on each of them. So you, you drop, you play your two cards, each have two different actions. Yeah. So like if you were going to heal someone, they end up having a higher initiative and healing themselves first. You can be like, all right, that's not wasted. I can do this other ability. Yeah. Or it has like just a standard value of a movement or attack. Yeah. You've got these like, you've got a, a almost a deck of cards, a yeah. small deck of cards. Is it eight? I think eight cards. Oh, yeah. So it varies per person. Oh, okay. Per class. Yeah. So I think typically you've got anywhere between 10 and 15 ish cards in your pool. Yeah. And then before you leave and go out on a journey, you get to pick X amount of those to take with you. Yeah. And they're your abilities. So maybe of your 15, you get to take 10 or 11. Uh, okay. And so, like you said, each card, is it's like split in half. Yeah. With a top and bottom ability, and they're different. Yeah, like yeah. The top one might be attack three, range, whatever. The yeah. bottom one might be like... Move. Go invisible or move or whatever. Yeah. And so you play these two cards face down, two cards, so effectively four different abilities and yep. many different combinations, I suppose. And then you all flip them over together. You're not really allowed to say what you're doing. No. You can speak broadly. You can say, like, I'm going to try and do some damage and maybe finish those guys off. Yeah. But you can't say things like, all right, I'm going to target this person with a six damage poison attack. Yeah. And then I need you guys to finish it. You can't speak um, so... Uh, directly, directly, yeah, 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 yeah. You speak ambiguously. Yeah. Um, so you all put your cards face down. You all flip them, and they've got little initiative values. You pick which one you want to use. Yeah. Sometimes you might want to go last. Yeah. Maybe you've only got a card that has healing, but none of you have actually taken damage. But you need to use that healing ability. Yeah. So you wait till last because then you get the most value out of it. Things like that. So it's really fun because, like you said, we can play cards face down together. And you might kill the target I was going to do. Yeah. So then I kind of got to change my plan on the fly. Yeah. Which I can, I still got a bit of freedom because each card has two different abilities. Yeah. But they can also always be used. As a move or as yeah, an attack. As a base attack of two or a base yeah. move of two. Yeah. So there's all these fun different like mechanics going on as well as the monsters turns and their initiatives and. Yeah. Yeah, it's cra- and you've got items as well. Yeah. You get yeah. gold, you go to Gloomhaven, you buy items from the shop. Um, you've got cards that are discarded, but then you've got some that are lost. Yeah. You've got, oh, so many, you've got ongoing effects, you've got summons. So it's a real in-depth game, but it's actually quite easy to grasp. Yeah. If you've got someone that's played it before, you could teach it to someone in like an hour. Yeah. You run through the first half of the, you know, you and Stewie got it quite quickly. Oh, yeah. Once we, yeah, that first time, once we sort of got through the first couple of fights, you know the, you know how the game plays. Yeah. You know what happens. And the, it's the number one board game in the world, it's, I according can't to that. yeah, it's just according unreal. to Board Game Geek. Yeah. Um, if you're kind of new to board games, uh, Board Game Geek is a website I found to be invaluable. Yeah. Because you go on there and it's voted on by the people. Yeah. And so you can click on any board game anywhere on the website, and it will have at the top its overall score. Yeah. It's. Uh, score in a particular category. So it might be like the second best game as voted by the people. Yeah. But it might be the 14th best strategy game. Yeah. Its theme might be 98th best, you know. Isn't there like 90,000 games in there or something like that? Oh, something insane. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like every board game that people have logged in Yeah. is on there. I just can't believe that it's number one. Yeah. And like you buy most of your games from their top 100, don't you? Yeah. Um, yes, I do. Only because I'm like, I've got limited time. Yeah. Limited funds. Yeah. If I buy a board game, I want it to be a good one. Oh, of course. So, however, I've bought a few games that aren't even in the top 1,000. And okay. I thought they were phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. So, I would almost, disc- I, w- I would encourage people to maybe load up on a couple of the solids. Yeah. You know, top 100 games. Yeah, yeah. Because they're top 100 for a reason. Um, they're just staples. Yeah. But I would also like... Go find games that have seemed fun to you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, crazy. I think it's number one because of how in-depth it is, all those different mechanics. Yeah. But I think it's also number one because, like, its playability and replayability is insane. Mm-hmm. 
because there's like 90 plus ca- dungeons. Yeah. Which is just unfathomable. How long do you reckon it would take to play through all that? Like, Well, at least two hours per dungeon, 90 dungeons, 180 yeah, hours. There there's go. expansions. Yeah. There's all the time in between. Yeah. There's pro- if for you to finish Gloomhaven, 400 hours. Yeah, wow. I reckon. Um, which is great. Yeah. And the thing is, it doesn't feel like, I don't know, because I haven't played 400 hours of it, <laughs> but, you know, you play your one character, but it actually gets to a point, it's got a, your character has a goal. Yeah. And when it completes that goal, it actually retires. Yeah. And, and then you get a new that character. Goal, unlocks a new one. Yeah. And most of the stuff online, you actually have to go out of your way to find out what the rest of the characters are. Yeah, right. They're okay. all in these sealed boxes. You've got no idea apart from a symbol. Yeah. I mean, there's a musical symbol on one. I guess that's a bard of some kind. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I know nothing about them. So, so how do you unlock him? Yeah, well, yeah. when you complete your um, your goal... Yeah, it, it says open symbol. this box. Yeah, and then you yeah. play as that character. Yeah. So that's a very cool mechanic because a lot of people are like, oh, I build this character up over X amount of hours. Yeah. I don't want to retire them. Trust me. By the time you're 100 hours into that character... Yeah. The idea of something fresh and different and new, <laughs> yeah. that'll be very enticing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's a great game. We should nah, play it, Jack. Cool. You should come yeah, join our group. Jack yeah, Jack would froth man. it. I've got, uh, I've got like three different groups of friends that play Blue Oh, no, no, that's fine. <laughs> no, okay. Oh, good. Yeah. No, 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 we know. no, 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 it's all good, man. We know we're third in the list. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, we're not even in the list. <laughs> True. We were group three other four. groups. <laughs> <laughs> I will play. I will play with you guys at some stage. Do it, man. That'd and be sweet. I'll play with my brother at some stage. Yeah, that's cool. The good thing is, like, um, you as a group gain what's called prosperity in the town of Gloomhaven. Yeah. It's like a re- it's not reputation because you've also got reputation. So many different moving parts. Um, but prosperity is like, it basically means you get, it's almost like save. I don't know how to explain it, to be honest. But if our prosperity gets to level two, yeah, anyone that... If you make a character, it starts at level two. Oh, nice. So okay. it's almost like a, a, a redundancy. Yeah, yeah. And it means like if we get to Prosperity 2, anyone can join in on our campaign, grab one of the unused characters from the starting six, Yeah. start their character at level two and jump in. Yeah, that's you know? cool. That's really cool. I like that because it encourages new people to jump in. It's like, oh, I'm halfway through a campaign. Wait another 200 hours before you can start playing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing I could, it, the only knock against Gloomhaven I could say is that the box itself comes quite poorly designed for storing everything that's in there. Yeah, you actually have to go out and buy an organizer or build your own. Yeah, we we punched out yours last night. Yeah, man, mine was brand new. If yeah. you didn't have those boxes, you just have a box full of cardboard tokens. Ah, oh, it's it's kind of ridiculous. And there's hundred, there'd have be hundreds of tokens in there. Yeah, like. Yep. I mean, in their defense, I guess they didn't expect the game to be so big when yeah. they initially made it. Yeah. They would have just been focused on getting a game out. You yeah. Know? So it's not a big, it, but like there's no ability really within the box for you and us, you and me and Stewie, my bro, to save our progress. Nah. You have your little character sheet and stuff, but like the cards that you've taken, to, you know. Yeah. And the items that you've got, you kind of just got to throw them all in a box together. Yeah. I guess you can throw them in your character box loosely, but if someone else wants to jump in, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad. Obviously, it's the best game according to Board Game Geek, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Um, I think getting an organizer is pretty valuable. I think yeah, I'll be definitely. doing that. I, I'm sure there's a lot of aftermarket companies oh, that make different... Tons. There's an official and, one. Oh, there is an official one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, yeah, heaps. Yeah. But it's good. That's a good... It doesn't require DM. No. That's the best part about it. Yeah. You know, anyone can pick up the campaign book and do what I did, which is like each campaign, it has a little story. Yeah. Still follows a story, um, but you don't need a DM to do all that homework. No. Nah. They could show up. I could let you run yeah, the yeah, campaign. Yeah, just follow you know? by the book. You just read what's in the book. Yeah. It's kind of like the Warhammer Underworld's um, Silver Tower. Mm. It was like, it's a dungeon crawler and there's books to follow. There's there's setups and, you know, how you yeah how you draw the each dungeon, but... Yep. There's no DM. Yeah. Uh, the enemies act as a as an AI. So yep. they've got their own their own sort of um, uh, pattern they follow. They do different things uh, at the draw of a card. Yeah. So it's cool. I would rate Gloomhaven very highly. Yeah. I would get a core group of people, your close friends. Yeah. My advice would be to uh, 
here's my top three tips for a Whoa. new Gloomhaven player. Watch his top three tips coming in hot. Top three tips. Number one is make it a big event going back to Gloomhaven. Um, because you can choose to just go from where you are, yep. like you finish a dungeon. Sometimes you can choose just to go straight to the next one. That's fine. You can totally do that. But if you go back to Gloomhaven, I'd go grab a new ale, I'd turn on the tavern music, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'd chill out with the boys for five minutes. In fact, the first group I played with, we said you had to spend 10 minutes in Gloomhaven, yeah. which basically meant that music played for 10 minutes. Yeah. You're allowed to like, you go through your cards, you go through your items, you grab another beer, yeah. you talk about the last campaign, you try and make it feel like you're in the tavern yeah, yeah. at the Sleeping Lion in yeah. Gloomhaven. Um, that's number one tip because that helps just with immersion and yeah. the fun of it. That's cool. Then when you go off on your road journey, um, you feel like a party of people yeah. doing it. Um, tip number two, I've already forgotten. I'm just thinking about <laughs> this uh, drinking ales oh, and the sleeping yeah. lion. <laughs> um, tip number two is to, there's a, there's a phase where you all pick your two cards and mm-hmm. put them face down. Yep. Time it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grab a timer out because that's the longest phase. That's the, the most analysis paralysis yeah. phase because you're choosing your cards. That happened to me so many times the first time we played it. Yeah. I yeah. was always the last one. You guys are done. You guys are getting up from the table and yeah, I'm yeah. still looking at my cards. I'm like, what the fuck do I put down? Yeah. If I put down this, can I put down that? Yeah. And then so if I options. put down that, I can't put down that. Yeah. And like, oh, man. And sometimes like Stewie would rush and he was like, crap, I, did the, I was going to use the yeah. bottom two of both cards, but... Um, the cards that are split in half, you actually have to do the top of one and the bottom, and the bottom of, the, of other. the other. Yeah. So, you know, I would t- time that because it's just like, it's combat, you yeah. know, it's supposed to be stressful. Yeah. It's supposed to be split second decisions. And how, because of that, how long would you give two minutes, two minutes? So you, that sounds like a long time oh, when you're looking not, at these cards, no. at blink of an eye, mm. blink of an eye and two minutes is up. But if you think about it, two minutes per time means you can get through that phase five times in 10 minutes. Yeah. Which significant, it, it turns a two hour dungeon into like an hour and a half. Long. Yeah. You know, it yeah. cuts out a lot. Yeah. And just we'll do that a, next time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Does it come with an egg timer? No, it doesn't. A lot of games do, you know, like yeah. I'm surprised that it didn't. I think people are just like, eh, yeah, they've got phones. Yeah. You know? yeah I <laughs> they suppose. can slap on the timer or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely would recommend that. Uh, the third tip is instead of using the monster cards and the monster stats, yeah, jump on to it's Gloomhaven Helper. There's a web-based app. Yeah, effectively, you put your character in each it's of so the characters. Good. Yeah, you put your enemies in. Yeah, how many are you fighting? And then it draws their cards for them. It does all the monster AI. It yeah. just cuts down on board. You know, yeah, uh, footprint yeah. on the table. Oh man, I'm just I'm just remembering now how big it was with those big squares. Yeah, that had the different monster AI yeah. and stats on there. Yeah, yeah, it's nuts. And yeah. not to mention like putting the wounds on them and yeah. the abilities on them. Like you can do all that digitally with a few clicks. Yeah, um, that saved us heaps of space and heaps of time. And it did a few good housekeeping things as well, like with the runes. Yep, it would 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 add would remove them like half. Yeah. And then take them off when they're done. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and just another moving part to Gloomhaven is when you cast spells, sometimes it generates an element. Yeah. Like wind, water, earth, heart, Captain Planet. <laughs> um, and when an element is generated, it's sort of like floating around in yeah. the space. Um, maybe someone used like an airbender <laughs> wind ability. And so there's a lot of wind in the room. Yeah. So other people can, can they might use have that. cards that consume wind. Yeah. yeah. And, like, boost their ability. Yeah. However, the turn after that, that it's generated, um, it goes down to, like, half strength. Yeah. Which waning. can still be consumed. Yeah. And used fully. But then the turn after that, it's, it's gone. gone. Yeah. But a lot of people can forget to, like, move those to yeah. full strength, waning, disappeared. Whereas yeah. the app does it automatically. Yeah. So, yeah. I would, those are my top three tips. <laughs> Time Get the a random. Selection. Make a big thing of Gloomhaven. Yeah. And use Gloomhaven Helper for like your monster stuff. Yeah, yeah. Cuts definitely. down time, footprint, makes the game just more enjoyable, I think. You know, when we had our last board game episode, we talked about our top three board games. Mm-hmm. Both of us only got through our top two. And True. we said, next board game episode, oh. we're going to have a top three oh, for crap. you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I I'll- actually can't remember which ones I picked. 
<laughs> I would assume, you know, that this will be a good test to, to pick if they're truly my top three. <laughs> yeah. But I think my top two would have been Root and Sid Real Confluence. Would you, oh, would they I it? don't even I can't even remember, man. Root, Root might have been there. Root, Root definitely I was. I don't remember yeah. the other one, Sid okay. Real Confluence. Yeah. So anyone listening to this right now who's listened to the board game episode, email in what Fox's top three board games were. Um, were. No need. I'm going to go back. And if he's got it wrong, <laughs> yeah, he I'll buy you a beer. board game. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, board game. <laughs> um, definitely Root was in there. Oh, number three. You go, Shane. I'm still thinking. You know, I haven't even... I can't even remember my, my top three. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was but, like, this whole time pick... I'm like, oh, yeah, and I remember, and then I'm like, nah, I fucking can't I know remember. one of yours. Was it De- Dead of Winter? Might have been. I know yeah, I talked that's, about that's, it. That's yeah, it might yeah. have been, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's something I want to play more often as well. Mm. It's got a bit of RPG elements to it. Yeah. Get bit of survival. It. Bit of survival. You got yeah, your backpack yeah. there. You're ready to go, oh, bro. Oh, man. And it's zombies, dude. Mm. Perfect. Um... Oh yeah, I think I said Ticket to Ride was as oh, yeah. one of mine as well. Very so solid basic. Game. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I still can't. I still Wait, can't you, think you of brought it up? I yeah, thought I you must have had like. Episode, I thought you were going to get the jump on me. I was hoping I'd buy time. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'll, I'll try and pick my three. I think it's it's definitely Root. Yeah. Oh man, but there are so many that could like tie that spot. You it's don't want to give it away, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it right now. Lock it in. I'm gonna go number two. Spirit Island. Oh, big. Can't remember if I, we talked about it we a little did. bit. We did briefly, yeah. I just think it's, I mean, we don't play it enough. No. Nah, it's phenomenal. No it captures, it's cooperative, it's yep. unique, it's got so many moving it's parts. It's only cooperative. Like some games have the yeah. option of being cooperative or PvP, yeah. Yeah, but it's, you can only play it cooperatively. And that's hard enough. Yeah. You wouldn't want to work against each other. <laughs> no. It, it's just a struggle to beat the invaders. Yeah. Um, and I think number three would be Sidereal Confluence. Okay. They're all three very different games. Yep. So Root is a war game. Yep. I like it mostly for its theme. Yeah. I bought it for its theme. You did. When it was a Kickstarter. Yep. I was like, those animals, those cute little critters, yep. I got to have that game. I don't even care what it is. I just bought it for the art. <laughs> yeah. And it's actually an insanely phenomenal game. Yeah. It's just the, yeah, it's great. So it's a PvP war game. Yep. Number two. Uh, Spirit Island is a co-op game, only co-op, like you said. Yep. Um, and very complicated. Yeah. But very amazing. Yep. And then number three is Sidereal Confluence, which is not like either of those. It's like a, it's the trading game I mentioned where like you have resources. Oh, the cubes. The cubes. <laughs> yeah. The I big black that. cubes. We did talk about yeah. that one. Yeah. I talked about it. I don't know if I put it in my top three, but yeah. it's definitely number three. It's kind of like what we spoke about before the podcast. It's like Daisy, where yeah, okay. it's got it's got those <laughs> moments in it that can't be replicated by any other game. Yeah, yep. there's no yep. other game that gives you that. It's like you're on the um, Wall Street. It's like Wall Street up, Exchange. Yeah, it's yeah. like a scene out of Wolf of Wall Street yeah. where there's eight of you. <laughs> And you're all just yelling at each other. You're like, Shane, I need that yellow cube. I'll give you three green small ones. You're like, I don't need any green small ones. And then the person on the other side pipes up. They're like, I need three small ones. Yeah. And they're like, but I need a, I need a three small ones and a hex. And I'm like, all right, uh, Stewie, I need your hex. Because in my head, I'm like, I'll, I'll grab the hex. I'll grab three small ones. I'll trade it to that guy to get the cube to trade to Shane. <laughs> By the time I've done that, I go back to you, Shane. And you're like, oh, I already gave my big black cubes to Jack. And yeah. I'm like, Jack, I need those big black cubes. He's like, so do I. All I've got is bl- big bl- blue cubes. <laughs> I'm like, actually, yeah, I could get one of those and a big yellow cube. And that's just me. Yeah. You know, imagine eight people going Doing the through same that. Thing. Oh. Yeah. And it's yeah. 10 minutes. It's timed. Oh, man. It's we got to play it. It's insane. I'm we actually, play it. I don't have it. What? Yeah, no. Nah, the other guy in our group. The board game guy's got it. The board game guy's got it. Yeah. But it's being remastered at the moment. Uh, okay. So it's actually coming out this month Yep. as a remastered version. Same game. Interesting. No tweaks to the rules, I don't think. It's all just visuals. Because yep. the visuals were quite, eh. Yeah. You didn't play it for the visuals. No. But it's more than just that trading aspect because you all play as like different classes, different races. Yeah. So you've got your own, these little converters. Oh, it's just, yeah, it's yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, yeah, it's it's just so hard to give that third spot away. Just do it, man. Take the plunge. I'm ha- I, I, I'm relieved. I'm gonna. I'm There's gonna... a big weight off my shoulders for that. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm ten inches lighter. Ten inches longer. Ten inches. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am going to. This might come a little bit of left field. Okay. 
Warhammer Underworlds. Oh, of course. Excellent choice. It's a board game, technically. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a boxed game. It's got a, it's got a card it's got deck boards. building it's element got, to it. Yeah. It's got boards. It's got miniatures. Yeah. Best game's got miniatures. Yeah. No, I... But where's that, where's that slot in? Is that's that number, number three? three. Okay. Yeah, yes, yeah. So, um, Dead of Winter's probably number one. Yep. Uh, Ticket to Ride, number two. Okay. And um, Underworld's number three. Gun to your head. You can only play Warhammer Underworlds or Warhammer Kill Team for the rest of your life. Oh, man. That's tough. Mm. Does Kill Team allow me to play the all the different races? Like, can I have, like, different Kill Teams or just the ones I've got? Um, Great question. I would say just... Like, can I build a new Kill Team? Like, yeah, I've got Tower yeah, now. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So you've got... Any like you, I can you go still have to go and buy them. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you can any of them. Uh, you can, but you get to play that system and that system only. Probably kill team. There you go. Yeah. There's number three. <laughs> <laughs> True. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I guess like Underworlds is good because it's more entry level. Yeah. Doesn't use the the rulers. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Your stats full hexes more. and yeah. that. It's so I, I play it with the boss and she loves it. Yeah. She gets right around it. Yeah. Um. So I think that pays strongly into why I enjoy it too. Yeah, I guess Kill Team is less of a board game. Yeah. And more it's of a, a skirmish. It's a tabletop war game. It is, yeah. It's, it's actually skirmish. not a board game at yeah, all. Yeah. I don't even know why I put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> Which would you rather play? Yeah. 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 That's very cool. Yeah. Good. To, yeah, there you go. Top three is locked in. Top three is locked in. For now, it changes. Yeah, it's uh, it's organic. It is. Yeah. It's a living system. Got to keep it organic, dude. Uh, yeah, man, we'll have to play Spirit Island. Yeah. It's, it's got a big, the only thing I don't like about it, it's got a big footprint in the sense of how much space it takes it does. up. It's actually not comparable to Gloomhaven though. No, so. no. I don't think many games are really, are they? Uh, oh, I, I played, uh. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. I didn't even start talking about this. No, no. Um, so the Game of Thrones board game. I'll give like a super quick rundown because, uh, I mean, it's just, I could talk about it for hours. Yeah. I love Game of Thrones, despite what happened to it. Ooh. Just like I love Star Wars, despite what happened to it. <laughs> Big. Um, and yeah, you know, let's not go into that. <laughs> so the Game of Thrones board game is, it's a war game and you play as any of the houses. Yeah. Um, it's sort of got, I think it's got. Up to nine different houses. It's up to eight players. How many are even in the movie? I mean, there's, I mean, the, oh, I mean, I mean the show. There's, there's tons. There's tons. Yeah, but Is you play really? as like the nine main okay. ones. So like Stark, Baratheon, Lannister, um, Greyjoy. No wait, that's not a house. Uh, yeah, but he's called? the one with the boats. Yeah, yeah, the boats. Yeah. Ironborn. I yeah. was called. Damn it. Anyways, I'm not gonna linger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can play as House Martell, um, House. Whatever, man. Yeah. Um, you could play as Daenerys, you know, the house Targaryen. Oh, yeah. Um, heaps. Yeah. Uh, so you play as all these houses. All It's the map of Game of Thrones. It's yeah. the actual map. Westeros. It's Westeros and the other one, Essos, whatever it's called. Is that the one with the um, savages? Yeah. It's got the Dothraki. Yeah. And, yeah. It's it's the... Uh, I've, I've watched it, but not... I, I didn't really get into it. Okay. We'll work so on that. That's a, we'll work on that. <laughs> I'm sorry Anyways, in advance. It's uh yeah, it's a, it, that's a whole nother episode to yeah, be honest. But yeah, we yeah. played it at eight players. Yeah. And it was phenomenal. It would have been fun. It was insane. I think any game with eight players is fun. I think so. And the thing about it is it, it does its theme really well. Okay. So Game of Thrones is all about like it's all about intrigue and plots, yeah. and backstabbing and allegiances. Sabotage. It's political. Yeah. It's all about that. And the board game forces you to do all those things. Really? Okay. Which I found amazing. Yeah. Because board games can try and force you to do it, but often when it's a war game, it's like, well, this strat's the best one. Yeah. So we're yeah. just going to do that. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it forces you to make allegiances, Yeah. but you can't win while you still have those. So ah. at some stage you have to backstab, but it's like, well, I know Shane needs to backstab me at some point and I need to, he knows that I need to backstab him, yeah. but... It's irrelevant. It it's irrelevant now because we both need each other. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just really cool. We'll talk more about that next time. Yeah, because yeah. It's... We'll, have to, we'll have to do some some research on that one, I reckon. Oh, we'll play I mean, it, man. Well, you've played it, but I'll I've played it tons. To... 
But this was the first time I played the expansion. Yeah. Which added the whole other map and House Targaryen. Dragons? Yeah, there's dragons. Oh, uh, there's big. wildlings. There's everything. It's, yeah. it's great. It's it phenomenal. does sound fun. But does sound fun. board games are a big thing we do. And that yeah. will always be a staple of our episodes. Yeah, we, we'll be we dropping can't on. not. Nah, nah. Can't not. It's, you know, we do it as much as we do other hobby stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I play every other week. We have a big big board game sesh. Yeah. You and me and my bro play Gloomhaven. Yep. We'll probably play Spirit Island or something with Jack soon. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, you don't have a choice, Jack. Spirit Island's <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. You, cool, you, cool. you get around uh, it, I've Jack. I've been convinced. Yeah. yeah. Um, congratulations to our... For, is that our first winner? Oh, yeah. Aiden. Yeah, yeah man. Congratulations. Playing some Jane Steeler, Jane Steeler Colts. Some neophyte hybrids. That's the ones. Little drillers. Little yep. rock drillers. Yeah, yeah. Um, he plays Necromunda. Oh. So you can actually get the free rules for those on the Warhammer community. Oh, sweet. So you can actually use them in Necromunda. Oh, yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah, when I emailed him, I said, oh, these will... These you can use these in Necromunda or Kill Team. Yep. So maybe he'll start looking at Kill Team as well, but... Yeah. Yeah. I like... That GW is doing that more. Yeah, free rules in, in White Dwarf. And like and using stuff. one thing in the main 40k game. Yeah. Kill Team, Necromunda. It's the way to do it, man. Yeah. It's the way to do it. Yeah. And that's what we try to do like at any time we're giving away something. Like our April giveaway is for some Rust Stalkers. Yeah. Or Infiltrators, however you want to build them. Some Skitari. They can go in your main Admech army. Yeah. They could be a Kill Team. Yep. Whatever, man. Yeah. They could just be sweet models. That's it. They are sweet models. They are sweet models. Yep. So that's cool. But yeah. Um, yeah, so well that's that's board games, man. We yeah. brought the board game. We'll we'll definitely keep that as a part of the regular regular rotation. Yeah. Anytime we're playing one, uh we'll take photos and put it up in, in the, the Discord, Discord yeah. Facebook. Yep. Don't forget to like our Facebook page. Yeah. And F- FB.me yeah. slash hobby homies. Or if that's too complicated, Facebook.com slash hobby homies. Hobby homies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. Join us on Discord. We're on YouTube, so True. Like us on YouTube. Check out the videos. The videos on there are always going to be sort of a, a bit behind than the, than the yeah. episodes here. Yeah. A bit more guys in, involved with that. Yeah. It's Again. A separate upload system. Yeah. So. Yeah. Spotify, iTunes. If you can follow us on both of those, give us a five star review on iTunes. Sort of helps us get recognised by iTunes and more potentially more listeners. It lets Steve Jobs know help. that we exist. Yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> You cruised over that. It's no longer with us. <laughs> Rest in peace, Jobs. Uh-huh. Um, and don't forget to check out Churchy on YouTube. Always check out Churchy. Always check out Churchy. That's, that's step one. That is. that is Step two, listen to our podcast, maybe, if you've got time. <laughs> step one, check out Churchy. Yeah, Churchy. Yeah. He's got videos on everything. Yeah. You know what's a real banger of his episodes? What's that? Haven't seen it, but um, that's the first thing I'm going to go home and watch. <laughs> Why you should play StarCraft 2. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially now, like the game's kind of chilled out a little bit. Yep. So I'm I'm keen. You're a StarCraft guy. I am. I played it uh, competitively for the longest time. Yep. Many nights at 5 a.m. Wow. I was up till. Why 5 a.m.? Oh, you mean you stay up till 5 a.m.? Stayed up till 5 a.m. I you were getting up at 5 a.m. to I play. Was, I've never been addicted to a game like I was competitive StarCraft. Like I've loved games that I've wanted to like. Oh, I can't wait to get home from work and play it. Yeah. But not many will I just be there till five a.m. Yeah, it's big. And then get up and go to work at like eight. So that was me with WoW in back in high school. Oh. Saying uh, I remember one night we sat up till like three a.m. and I was like, "Fuck, I got an exam tomorrow." Like oh. it was like year eleven or something like that. Oh, I mean, World of Warcraft uh, ruined many people's <laughs> yeah future prospects. <laughs> yeah. Don't feel bad. <laughs> there are people still that are just like. Yeah, maybe I should go back and finish school. Like yeah. 45. True. <laughs> <laughs> They've never seen a woman. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for listening to Hobby Homies. Love you guys. Uh, we'll see you next week where we talk about something else. Something else. What is it next week? Star Wars? It could be Legion. I think we're talking Legion. Oof. It's going to be a big week then. Yeah. Because I've... T- Legion's on the back burner for me. It has been on the back so Me I'm gonna, too. I'm going to have to put it on the main grill. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yep. Keep that up. Took me gas. Toodles, homies. Peace. I'm going to take my bug out bag and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> well, you'll be safe wherever you go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>